Ask a mathematician what they think the greatest unsolved problem in maths is, and the chances are they'll say the Riemann hypothesis. It's named after the German mathematician Bernard Riemann, who proposed it in 1859, and it has to do with the distribution of prime numbers. So that's today's topic. I want to look a little bit more deeply into what the Riemann hypothesis is and what progress we've made towards solving it. A prime number is a number that can be divided only by itself and one without leaving a remainder. Prime numbers are fascinating not only because they're of fundamental importance in maths, but also because Although we can't predict where the next one will pop up on the number line, they don't occur completely at random. There are rules governing their overall distribution. The most important of these rules that's been proved to date is called the prime number theorem. It states that for any number n that's large enough, the number of primes less than n is roughly equal to n divided by the natural logarithm of n. In 1859, Bernard Riemann published an eight-page memoir on prime numbers, his only writing on the subject, titled On the Number of Primes Less Than a Given Magnitude. In it, he put forward a suggestion, subsequently called the Riemann Hypothesis, which has teased mathematicians ever since in their attempts to prove or disprove it. Another great German mathematician, David Hilbert, reputedly said, the first thing he'd ask on waking from a sleep lasting a thousand years would be, is the Riemann hypothesis established yet? In his book on the theory behind Riemann's suggestion, the American mathematician H. M. Edwards wrote, It is now unquestionably the most celebrated problem in mathematics, and it continues to attract the attention of the best mathematicians, not only because it's gone unsolved for so long, but also because it appears tantalizingly vulnerable and because its solution would probably bring to light new techniques of far-reaching importance. To underscore how highly the Riemann hypothesis is regarded, it's one of the seven Millennium Prize problems identified by the Clay Mathematics Institute and for which one million dollars is on offer for the first verified solution. It's also the only one of these seven that appears in a list of ten major unsolved problems discussed by David Hilbert in an address he gave on August the 8th, 1900 to the International Congress of Mathematicians in Paris. To the question of how the primes are distributed, Riemann brought to bear the methods of a newly developed branch of maths known as complex analysis. As the name suggests, this has to do with all the different ways of working with complex numbers, numbers that contain a real part and an imaginary part, such as 5 minus 3i, where i is the square root of minus 1. At the core of complex analysis is the study of complex functions, which are just rules for turning one set of complex numbers into another. Back in 1732, the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler defined a previously unknown beast of the mathematical world called the zeta function. It's a type of infinite series, an infinitely long sum of terms that may or may not converge to a finite value, depending on what numbers are fed into it. Under certain circumstances, the zeta function reduces to the harmonic series 1 plus a half plus a third plus a quarter and so on, which has been studied since ancient Greek times when Pythagoras and his followers were obsessed with understanding the universe in terms of numbers and musical harmony. Riemann took Euler's zeta function and extended it to include complex numbers, which is why the complex zeta function is also known as the Riemann zeta function. In his memoir of 1859, Riemann put forward what he believed was a better formula for estimating how many primes there are up to a given number. However, this formula depends on knowing for which values the Riemann zeta function is zero. The Riemann zeta function is defined for all complex numbers of the form x plus i y except those for which x equals 1. The function goes to zero for all negative even integers, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6 and so on, 
but these aren't of interest in tackling the problem of how prime numbers are distributed, and so are referred to as trivial zeros. Riemann realised that the function also has an infinite number of zeros in a critical strip between x equals 0 and x equals 1, and further, that these non-trivial zeros are symmetric with respect to the line x equals a half. His famous hypothesis is that all of the non-trivial zeros of the complex zeta function lie in fact exactly on this line. If true, the Riemann hypothesis implies that prime numbers are distributed as regularly as they can possibly be within the ultimate limits imposed by the prime number theorem. In other words, granted that there's a certain amount of noise that introduces uncertainty into where prime numbers spring up, the Riemann hypothesis says that this noise is extremely well controlled, that the apparent indiscipline of primes is, behind the scenes, highly choreographed. Another way to think of this is in terms of rolling a multi-sided die that has a probability of 1 over log n of coming up prime. Suppose for each integer n that's greater than or equal to 2, you roll the die n times. In an ideal world, the expected number of primes would be n over log n. But the world not being ideal, there's always some variation, a margin of error, around the expected value. The size of this error is given by what's commonly called the law of averages, or large numbers. What the Riemann hypothesis claims is that the deviation of the distribution of primes from n over log n is no greater than what the law of averages predicts. There's plenty of strong evidence to suggest that the Riemann hypothesis is true. Riemann checked the first few non-trivial zeros himself to make sure that they obeyed his rule, and with one of the earliest computers, Alan Turing ran the calculation out to the first thousand. In 1986 came verification that the first billion and a half non-trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function sit right on the critical line, where the real part of the function equals a half. Much earlier, in 1915, G. H. Hardy proved that there's an infinite number, though not necessarily all, non-trivial zeros on this line. In 1989, the American mathematician Brian Connery showed that the number of zeros on the line had to be more than two-fifths of the entire population of zeros in the critical strip. Six years later, after several years of running Zeta Grid, a distributed computing project, the first 100 billion zeros of the Riemann function were found to fall precisely on the critical line, with no exceptions. It would be a bit odd to suspect that the Riemann hypothesis was wrong, given every indication that it's right. However, in mathematics, belief and persuasive evidence are a world away from proof. Without proof, any results, however useful, that take for granted the mere suggestion of a theoretician, even one as eminent as Riemann, are like a house resting on sand. While there remains the possibility that a single non-trivial zero lies elsewhere in the critical strip other than on the line x equals half, this wonderful notion of Riemann's really has no more weight than wishful thinking. The importance of proving or disproving it, however, goes well beyond the bounds of number theory or of maths as a whole. The Riemann hypothesis, it turns out, has a subtle but direct connection with this subatomic universe. One day, in April 1972, at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton, New Jersey, mathematicians Hugh Montgomery and Atlee Selberg were chatting about Montgomery's recent discovery to do with the spacing of non-trivial zeros on the critical line. Later, in the cafeteria, Montgomery was introduced to Freeman Dyson, who was professor in the School of Natural Sciences. As soon as Montgomery mentioned the subject of his work on the zeros, Dyson realized that the maths was identical to that of a theory he'd investigated in the 1960s. So-called random matrix theory can be used to carry out calculations on the energy levels of particles inside heavy atomic nuclei. Dyson recalled his surprise at seeing the same equations pop up in a field to do with the distribution of prime numbers. His result was the same as mine. 
they were coming from completely different directions and you get the same answer. It shows that there is a lot there that we don't understand and when we do understand it, it will probably be obvious, but at the moment it's just a miracle. More than 150 years have passed since Riemann announced his hypothesis to the world and the absence of a proof has become like a gaping hole at the heart of mathematics. Perhaps the ideas needed to solve it are so advanced or radical that they're beyond the scope of our present understanding. If so, the very pursuit of a proof may help develop powerful new mathematical techniques. If a proof finally does come, its importance to maths will be hard to overstate because of the foundational role that prime numbers play in the number system and the relationship they have to hugely diverse areas of the subject. Hundreds of theorems will stand or fall depending on whether the Riemann hypothesis is found to be true or false. If true, more questions will be asked, including why primes lie at such a delicate balance point between randomness and order. If false, then all these theorems would collapse and a devastating earthquake would shake mathematics to its core.